Are you worried that you're not even in charge of your own life? Well, Sad Guru, the teacher and poet, says that society is writing the prescription for how you are living, that we are not free. I spoke to Sad Guru on my podcast, Under the Skin, available on Luminary, which you can get on Apple, last year. We had an amazing conversation. He's a great, wise and brilliant teacher. Tell me what you think about his perception of society from a spiritual perspective. Essentially, he says capitalism is greed as an economic system. Stay to the end because I want to know what you think about the things that Sadhguru said. Let me know in the comments below. Stay to the end of the video. When you say that um, that seventy percent of Americans are getting some sort of pharmaceutical aid, whether that's prescribed or illicit. It seems to me to not be a coincidence that this is the most economically advanced culture. It seems to me not to be a coincidence that this isn't a culture without ideologies or philosophies. It's one with a deeply entrenched, financially supported, culturally enforced, propaganda illuminated ideology of deep, deep capitalist consumerism. Whilst this might be Thanksgiving for some, it's Black Friday for others. And the ideology of consumerism is more and more supported. And I believe and agree with you that we may be the CEOs of our own uh, narcotic or chemical factories. But we individuals are not living in uh, a neutral culture. We're living in a culture that has certain aims and intentions for its populace. And the statistics that you cite, Sad Guru, for me, make it very, very clear what the intentions of this culture are. And again, whilst I acknowledge the only real, um, the only role I can meaningfully conduct is my own own evolution, my own awakening, and hope that that has an environmental benefits, please God. I feel that it is negligent not to observe the cultural impact of ideologies that are making drug addicts, that are manufacturing mental illness, that these conditions don't occur in isolation. They occur at epidemic levels because of broken ideologies, which are themselves a reflection and manifestation of these unconscious appetites that we have yet to process on a cultural level and that we are discussing how to process on an individual level. I would say all ideologies are uh, spirituality gone off track, derailed. Because, let's see it this way, there are two uh, fundamental ideologies because you took up this commercialism that's uh, going on now. So there is a capitalistic way of doing things which is essentially manufacturing more, consuming more, whatever. Another is a communist philosophy of sharing and, you know, making it a community. Where does this come from? So, capitalism or this com consumerism as we call it today, is coming from more, more and more. Well, that is a spiritual aspect, but gone bad, it's gotten derailed. A train is good when it's on the track, when it goes off the rails, it's a disaster. So, uh, this is a disaster because more, more and more is human consciousness because human being doesn't want to be contained, he wants to be everything. But now we are going in installments. If you want to become infinite, can you approach it in installments? That's a question. You want to become infinite, can you count one, two, three, four, five, six and say one day I'm infinite? No, all you will become is endless counting. This is consumerism. You're becoming an endless counting. How much ever you count, what you were... At one time you were counting uh, ten dollars or ten pounds as a great amount of income. Today you may be saying ten billion, but it may, doesn't mean they're anything actually. So people suffering is not related to how much they have. It is the fundamental thing about wanting to be more. Well, if I have to use an analogy, let us say you have two billion dollars, I'm assuming, okay? And you Roughly lost one billion dollars, you will be miserable. But somebody else in a remote society has two cows, that's all he has, and he lost one cow. He will also be equally miserable, not less miserable, all right? But you can... in the marketplace, you cannot compare one billion dollars to one cow. But in human experience, that's how it is. So the more on the outside 
or less than the outside doesn't really make a difference except in social situations. Because... because you particularly said about the impact of the society upon the individual human being, society writing the prescription how you should live, that is the first thing I addressed, that is human consciousness should shape the society. Society should not shape the individual human consciousness. Right now, the only value that you have is economics. Nobody is even discussing whether even in England, they're only talking economy these days. <laughs> you talk to an old grandmother, she also talks economy. You talk to a fifteen-year-old boy, he also talks economy. In between, everybody else's economy. Everybody have become slaves of the economic engine. So, economy is essentially a glorified version of survival process, all right? A man went out and bought a bag, you know, a bag full of fish home. That was his survival at one time. But now it's become glorified, a man goes to the stock market and does complex things and comes home with the same things or not even that, all right? So, virtual fish, maybe he's, he's coming home with, we don't know what he's coming home with. But essentially, it's survival process glorified and spread across the world. The complexity of transactions has led to this, but our problem is, when something starts rolling, we don't have a steering wheel in our hands. The right now, the economic condition in the world is, everybody has got their leg pressed on the throttle. Nobody has the steering wheel. Nobody has the steering wheel. Who's got the steering wheel? It's simply hurtling down. Only virus has brought some sense and slowness breaks on the economy. This is the time to reorganize ourselves, so at least the machine is running slow. This is a time to rethink many things, but I don't know if we will do that. We may go back at it with vengeance once the virus is done <laughs> So essentially, wanting to be more is the basis of capitalism. What is the basis of communism? That is also the same thing. What you think is well-being for you, you want it to spread to everybody else. Maybe not in terms of materials, uh, material substances, but in terms of well-being as a commune, as a community, as a communism, essentially means we all share and live. But unfortunately, that also went off the rails because those who had nothing to share wanted to share. Those who had something to share didn't want to share. It doesn't work like that. When something... when someone has a lot and he wants to share, it'll become a beautiful process. Well, uh, someone who has nothing to share, he wants to share, it'll become ugly. Unfortunately, that's what happened to the communism in the world. Poorest of the people went for communist philosophies. The richest in the world should have gone. Then it would have been a totally different world altogether. So both of them are only talking about inclusion. But how? Inclusion happens in many different ways. If it finds a simple, basic, physical expression, this longing to expand will find the expansion in the form of sexuality. What sexuality means is, some... Uh, something or somebody who is not a part of you, you're trying to make them a part of you. It seems to work for a few minutes and then falls apart. If it finds an emotional expression, we call it love. That means you're using your emotion to include somebody who is not a part of you as yourself. Expansion. If it finds a mental expression, we call this ambition, conquest, or maybe in today's world, just shopping. Because no more people are thinking of uh, going and conquering the world, they are thinking in terms of going to either to the local mall or to the stock market or somewhere else and they're shopping all the time. Shopping is the way to conquest right now. In some way, they're shopping one way or the other at different levels. But essentially, your longing is to become more than what you are right now. Well, did you enjoy that? Do you agree with Sadhguru? What do you think? Do you think a spiritual approach is the best approach? Do you think our economic systems are bringing out the worst of us? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to my channel and to the Awakening Side channel, which has all sorts of meditation and spirituality on there, stuff that you can use in your daily life that's practical and applicable. If you enjoyed this conversation, you might want to get the rest of it. Subscribe to Luminary, you can get it off Apple. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at this video where I go deeper into subjects like this with a comparison guest or have a look at this one where I explain other techniques that you might enjoy and be able to use. Most importantly of all, subscribe to my mailing list at russellbrand.com so we can remain in direct contact.
Thank you.